We get hands on with some pretty cool guns here at the 1911 Syndicate, but nothing ever quite like this. This gun has a quite interesting and famous history. You see, take an MP7, and MP7 is famous, and we all want it because we can't get it, and because of its use within the secret squirrel community. You just, you don't see them that often. This, however, is a one of one. There can never be another like it. In terms of guns of pop culture, it carries some real significance. This is Tom Selleck's actual carry gun back before. So how exactly did I get Tom Selleck's carry gun? I didn't steal it, okay? I know that's what everyone's thinking. I'm not that kind of guy. I am that kind of guy. I did not steal the gun though. So we will get into the full history of the gun, but ultimately the answer is it came to me from Luxus Capital. And I know what you're thinking, a financial firm loaned you this gun? Not exactly. Um, they do sound like a financial firm, but in reality, they are a um, sort of boutique shop of some of the most bizarre and unique firearms I've ever seen. So they deal in a lot of European imports, um, prototypes, stuff that as someone who appreciates fine firearms, I look through their inventory and I go, I don't know what most of this is, if I'm being perfectly candid with you. So I would definitely suggest go check it out because you might just be like, I know, what is this stuff? I mean, this is just some crazy weird stuff. But amongst their current inventory is Magnum 4. Now to lay some context around the Magnum 4 gun, we've got to back up to Mr. Tom Selleck's signature role. Now Tom has had a long career, but there can really be no debate what his hallmark role is. That would be as Thomas Magnum in Magnum PI. Now the show debuted in 1980, it ran eight seasons through 1988. It's set in Hawaii. It's one of the best parts of the show is the locale of it. And Thomas Magnum, he's a private investigator and a security expert. Post his service in Vietnam, he has been tasked with uh, looking after the estate known as Robin's Nest, which is owned by a wealthy novelist named Robin Masters. Magnum, he's kind of slumming it, you know, he lives in the guest house and he's got a pretty cush life. His only real pesky thing he's got to deal with is the property's caretaker. That would be Higgins, who lives up in the main estate. But Mr. Thomas Magnum has a, he's a manly man. He's got a little bit of style and taste. He gets to drive the property's Ferrari 308 GTS whenever he likes. He's got a stocked mini fridge of ice cold beers, a dream of many of ours. He wears a Rolex GMT Master, excellent choice. And more importantly, for the purposes of our story, he runs a Colt 1911. Now, it's reported that the 1911 used in the show was in 45 ACP, but they were having a hard time getting the blanks in Hawaii for the show. So they actually switched the gun over to a nine mil version of the same gun because it'd be easier to get the rounds. So I just need everyone to keep that in mind. Next time you come at me for liking nine mil 1911s, hate to break it to you, but your boy Magnum PI, he's actually running the same thing. Now, to my understanding, when Tom started starring in Magnum PI, he wasn't much of a gun guy in either direction. But over the course of time, starring on the show, he developed an affinity towards the 1911. So when the show wrapped up, Tom reaches out to the Colt Custom Shop to make him a set of guns to commemorate the show. It would be a set of four guns with gold inlaid serial numbers being Magnum 1 through 4. So Magnum 1 was a government model. Magnum 2 was an officer. Magnum 3 was a Colt uh, Mus Mustang 380, the little pocket pistol. And then Magnum 4 was a Colt Combat Commander. Magnum 1 through 3, he then donated to the NRA Museum where they stayed on display for, I believe it was 13 years. And it was actually just recently that they were sold back into private circulation in December of 2023. And he guesses on the price tag for Magnum 1 through 3. 
Now, interestingly, Magnum 4 was the one from the collection that Tom actually kept for himself. How do we know that? Well, allow me to read a little letter. This is dated February 6, 2023. This Colt 1911 Combat Commander, serial number Magnum 4, was made for me by the Colt Custom Shop along with three other Colts. The 1911 Government Model, Magnum 1. The 1911 Officers Model, Magnum 2. Colt Mustang 380, Magnum 3. Magnum 4 was my carry gun for a short time, but I honestly thought it was just too nice to put that kind of wear and tear on it. Magnum 1, 2, and 3 were donated to the NRA Fire Firearms Museum and are on display there. Thanks. Tom Selleck. About a year ago, he sent a few things from his collection to Rock Island Auction to be auctioned off. Amongst them was Magnum 4. That is when the folks from Luxus Capital picked it up. Fast forward the clock a few months later and they reach out. I mean, they truthfully make a very questionable decision and judgment by reaching out to a D-list YouTuber to feature the gun on their channel. Why do I say questionable decision? Because the, you know, the sad part of a gun like this is because of the nature of it as a collector's piece, just being so famous and everything, you simply can't shoot it. I mean, you can't. You can't shoot the gun, guys. Now, it appears that prior to the gun going to Rock Island Auction that Tom was the only owner, I was gonna say the last, but truly the only owner of the gun. And it is, there's just no way that an auction house as respectable as Rock Island would have shot the gun, right? Because that's not the business they're in. It's someone else's property and they're just the purveyor of that to the public. So if Rock Island didn't shoot it, and I know for a fact that Luxus Capital didn't shoot the gun, that would mean that in all probability, the last person to use and carry and shoot this gun was Magnum freaking PI. And while the gun is so collectible, and I mean truly a one of one, I mean, it seems, I mean, he did carry it. I mean, he trusted his life to it. I mean, it must have worked. Otherwise he wouldn't have carried it. And we've stumbled upon a, a range Ear Pro. It's Ear Pro on the thing. I'll just try the Ear Pro on. That's all I'm doing. And I mean, there's a MAGA 45 on the ground. It can't hurt to just put the MAGA in the gun. That can't hurt anything. And just see if it chambers around. It did. But now I got a hot gun. And the only way to clear a hot gun Guys, big thank you to the sponsor of today's video. That would be Sagara Gear. They make, I'm in a public place. So I'm not gonna show you my belt out of risk of what is attached to my belt right now. But I'm just gonna tell you, I'm wearing a Sagara belt. That would be the light inner Velcro belt. Um, that is my EDC, my range belt is the emissary belt when I want something a little bit more rigid. But beyond that, I got a bunch of cool other new products. Uh, they got like the head, uh, like the, the car headrest panel thing. I've got an IFAC on that, extra mag, like they've got that thing, the mag pouches they just came out with. 
the sort of system in which they attach. Really cool. So they got a bunch of cool stuff. We talk about the belts, but they got a lot more than just belts. You can check out the gear guide that we did a couple weeks ago, get some info on that. Code is 1911 Syndicate. That'll save you 10% off. And if you're looking for any other ways to uh, support the 1911 Syndicate, as you might imagine, it's not cheap to produce our channel and uh, we love doing it. That's why we do it. Um, but uh, using us for real estate would help a lot. We service a handful of different cities between Salt Lake, Dallas, Las Vegas, Colorado Springs. Like there's a few cities we list on the site. You can scope that out and uh, our Patreon will be linked down below as well where you can get some behind the scenes content. You will know probably what content's coming out before anyone else. Ask us questions. We do monthly Q and A's, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, appreciate the support. Back on with Magnum Ford. So what's it like to shoot Tom Selleck's carry gun? Well, it's an interesting feeling. Heading into the review, it's kind of funny because uh, such a, a gun that's you know rare and, and collectible and I mean really a one-off, Luxus was concerned that I might be critical of the gun. They were like, oh, you know, what if you don't like the gun? And I was like, guys, do you think this is a gun review? It's like, this is not a gun review. This is something to admire and appreciate. It's a piece of history that more so than really shoot it, right? You're not gonna take this to a class and burn it down for a thousand rounds. A piece like this is designed to, you know, put it in your pants. You know, you, you put it in your pants, you walk around, people come over for a barbecue, you show up to the door like this, You're like, how you doing? You guys want a beer? And you come on in, you know? And, and I put the gun in my pants and I've done this often and I, I feel a certain connection to Tom, you know, knowing that the same hardware is, has shared both of our, our spaces here. And if Tom ever sees this, I don't know if you feel the connection or not, Tom, but I like to think that maybe we're sharing a little bit of a moment here. So at its core, what do you really have here? Well, you got a Series 80 Combat Commander, right? It's got the classic Colt rattle. You actually can't even really hear it that bad. There you go. A little bit of that Colt rattle. You know, you hear some of that custom shop coming out there. Classic Colt maneuver there. It's in 45 ACP. And as much as I love the 9mm 1911, wouldn't you be a little disappointed if Magnum PI had a 9mm 1911 for his actual carry gun, you know? Uh, you've got this really quite beautiful um, floral scroll engraving that outlines uh, both sides of the gun there. You've got these ivory grips. A few people have asked me, they're like, is it real ivory? I go, I don't know, I think. I, I, I would assume so, I don't really know. Um, it is one of the, the more, uh, sort of entertaining features of the gun, the fact that this is a carry gun and it has no grip anywhere on it. And when you're shooting 45 on, you know, on a 1911 with no actual grip texture on the grips or front strap or, or, or anything like that, it's just kind of funny. You know, you get through like six rounds and you're like, all right, yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to readjust my grip here. Um, the gold inlay serial number is spectacular. I mean, that is kind of like a, a wow moment when you first see it and you get the significance of the gun. Of the features of the gun, probably the most interesting thing to me is the thumb safety. I've never seen anything quite like it. It leads me to a couple of, a couple of assumptions. One, Tom clearly was a right-handed shooter because it's not ambidextrous, right? It's only on this side of the gun. And it is the lowest thumb safety I've ever seen. I've never seen anything quite like it. Like even on a modern gun or old gun, I've never seen a thumb safety like it. So that's in the down position there. That's in the up. So with the thumb safety down as a lefty, like literally your hand covers up the thumb safety. So my only working theory here is he wanted this low thumb safety to really just use as that bench rest, even though I barely even hit it if I'm coming in there. It's definitely interesting. Tom, if you ever see this, I would love to know what you guys had in mind with the thumb safety there. But overall, it's just a special feeling. And the first time I shot the gun prior to today, I didn't shoot it much, but it was like, this is a really rad feeling. And you know, like Luxus was saying, like, oh, what if the gun has a malfunction or something? I said, guys, it's not a gun review, but perhaps even to my surprise, I haven't had a malfunction on the gun. The gun is run completely reliably. It just kind of works. Now, reflecting on the Magnum set, Magnums one through three are cool, but those weren't Tom's actual guns that he carried. 
See, one through three are famous because they've been in the public eye and it's been a story that's been told for a long time. I mean, they're museum pieces for God's sakes, but Magnum Four, that's Tom Selleck's actual EDC. And when I got the gun in, it was, I mean, it was a pretty surreal moment, but when it really hit me was when I took it apart. The first time that I was gonna take it out, I took it apart and I was like, oh, wow. And I asked Luxus, I was like, have you guys shot this? Have taken take it apart? They're like, no, not yet. And I was like, oh, I just took it apart. This gun is well used. And I mean that in the best possible way. I mean, all the internals were worn and it showed signs of real use. Like the thing has been properly used. And all of that leads to the character and the history and the story behind it. Like this isn't just some like prop gun or something. It's a properly used carry gun. You know, this gun, it harkens back to a time when men were men. And Tom Selleck is a cultural icon. Both, I mean, the, the Magnum PI role was so iconic from the fashion to the vehicles, to the watches, to the 1911, to the whole thing. I mean, it's just an iconic, iconic role. And Tom is amongst a very small list of mainstream celebrities who have stood up for gun rights. You know, I, I watched a clip of him going on the Rosie O'Donnell show prior to making the video and, um, you know, he defended his stance on the Second Amendment and by default probably defended where a lot of us are on the subject as well. And you just don't see that in mainstream Hollywood celebrities. And, you know, as I've thought about the gun, it, 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 it reminds me much like a vintage car. By modern standards, this is not particularly good, much in the same way that his Ferrari 308 GTS from the show, in its day, it was the pinnacle of performance, but technology and tools advance, and the 308 GTS by modern standards, probably incredibly slow. You know, not all guns have to be about performance metrics and the tightest tolerance in the world and the stats and, and all that jazz, right? There's such a thing as just owning a gun for the love of owning the gun. It doesn't matter if you're gonna shoot it, you have it because you like it and you think it's cool. Obviously this gun is cool, but it's a significant piece of firearms history, right? And it's just been a joy to get to not only shoot this, but just have it, get to tell people the story and pass that along throughout the gun community. So I appreciate Luxus Capital for letting me make the video. And with that said, guys, cheers. We'll see you next week.